Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're glad you're with us today as we begin a brand new year. We're still in the Christmas season. One more Sunday, next week will be Epiphany, but today we're still in the Christmas season, and one of the traditional things to do at this time of year um, in this Christmas season is to take another look at the name of Jesus, the name that means Savior. And so we're going to take a look at that name, and today we're going to think about how significant that name is in our lives. Our lives cross paths with the name of Jesus everywhere. And so we're going to talk about some of those way, ways today as we even are known by his name. We are Christians. We follow the Lord Jesus and we trust in him and his word. We're glad you're with us today as we, um, we gather to worship and we pray that um, you will be blessed as we do. We'll see you in just a minute in worship. We begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this year confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson today is from the Old Testament book of Numbers, chapter 6, 
verse 22. I think you'll recognize these verses. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Our second scripture reading is from the New Testament, the book of Philippians, chapter 2, the first 11 verses. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And our gospel lesson for today is from Luke chapter 2, beginning at the 21st verse and going until verse 40. At the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there is a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to the people of Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said, to Mary, his mother. Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there is a prophetess, 
Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, from the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Israel. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of our God. We now join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Than Jesus' blood and righteousness, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ the solid. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand.
when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may i then in him be found clothed in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before the throne on christ the solid rock i stand I've always thought that these verses from the book of Philippians were some of the most uplifting and powerful verses in the Bible. It's from Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. God has highly exalted Jesus and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus... Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Aren't those uplifting and powerful verses in God's holy word? The event that those verses are talking about when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, it's going to happen on the last day, on Judgment Day. When every single person ever conceived will realize that Jesus is real, that he really is the one true and only God, that he really is the Savior of the world. Unfortunately, for most people, since they reject Christ and his word during their lifetime, that will be the last gracious thing they see and do before they are thrown into the darkness of hell forever. But by God's grace alone, we do not have to wait for the last day to be forced to bow and acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord. Rather, by the power of the Holy Spirit, at work through the water of holy baptism and the word of God, we joyfully bow and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name of Jesus, Jesus Christ the Lord, that name is the greatest name of all. It's the name of our God and our Lord. That title, Jesus Christ is Lord, is used throughout the New Testament. All three words in various forms. Sometimes it's Christ Jesus the Lord or Lord Jesus Christ. Here it's Jesus Christ the Lord. It summarizes everything about him. It's who he is. And it tells us what he has done for us. Let's take a minute and think about all three of those names and titles. Jesus Christ the Lord. Remember that the name Jesus is the name that God the Father gave to his only begotten Son, who was born in Bethlehem, the one conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. That name, Jesus, is a word that means Savior, and it describes what he has done for us. Jesus has saved us. He has rescued us from terrible danger. He has rescued us from 
our own sin and, and its consequences. When we were dead in sin and we were crushed in our guilt, Jesus comes to our aid. He takes our place under those dreadful things and he sets us free. He saves us. He rescues us. Jesus has saved you from certain death. That is, eternal death in the darkness of hell forever. No wonder his name is Jesus. It's a word that means Savior. It describes what he has done for us. When we say Jesus Christ, we do not mean that Christ is a last name. Rather, Christ is a title. It's the same as the word Messiah, and they both mean anointed. Jesus is anointed. He is given the Holy Spirit in order to be the Savior of the world. As Christ, as the Messiah, the anointed one, Jesus fulfills all the prophecies and promises of the Old Testament times. All those prophecies and promises about the coming Messiah, the Savior. In his office of Christ, his work will be to live a holy and righteous life for us and then to suffer and die for the sins of the world. This is the work that the Messiah will do for us. This is the work that the Christ will do. It's what Jesus does for us. Because Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the anointed one, anointed with the Holy Spirit to be the Savior of the world. Scriptures teach us that Jesus Christ is Lord. The word Lord in the New Testament is equivalent to the name of God in the Old Testament. It's usually pronounced Yahweh in the Old Testament, and it identifies Jesus as the one true and only God. It's a title and a name of divinity. That when we talk about Jesus Christ, we are talking about the Lord. Jesus Christ is God. God of the Old Testament. God of the New Testament. The one true and only God. The God who saved his people Israel in the Old Testament times is now at work to save both Jews and Gentiles in these New Testament times. It's a divine title. Jesus is Lord. He is the one true and only God. Jesus Christ the Lord. It's who he is and what he has done for us. And God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Aren't those some wonderfully uplifting verses. Aren't those some powerful verses about our Savior? The name of Jesus, it's the greatest name of all. It's the name of our God and our Lord. The name Jesus Christ the Lord summarizes everything about him. It's who he is. It's what he has done for us. And that name of Jesus, 
It even identifies you. It becomes your identity. You are known as a Christian, one who follows Christ. As Christians, we live and move and have our being in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name intersects with our lives in many, many ways. Just think about the power and the significance of the name of Jesus in your own life. I think you'll be surprised at how many places your life intersects with the name of Jesus. It begins in your baptism. Remember, you were baptized in the name of Jesus. Of course, with the Father and the Son as well, but in the name of Jesus. You were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of Jesus. We gather to worship in the name of Jesus, because we trust his promise that where two or three are gathered together in his name, he is there in the midst of us. Our sins are forgiven in the absolution, in the name of Jesus. We confess Jesus' name with our lips as we worship and as we go out and witness to others about the Lord. We call upon the name in prayer as we pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus. We glorify his name, as we live holy and godly lives as his people. We know and believe and confess that there is no other name under heaven or earth by which we must be saved. We have our hope in Christ, that sure and firm conviction of the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. And it's based on Jesus' own resurrection from the dead on the third day. At times, we are even persecuted, ridiculed, or excluded because of the name of Jesus. And on the last day, every tongue will confess and every knee will bow at the name of Jesus. That name of Jesus, it permeates our lives. You live and move and have your being in the name of Jesus. It becomes your identity. You are associated with with the name of Jesus. You belong to him. He has washed you clean, put his name on you, and brought you into his family. This is who you are. This is your identity. It's who God created you to be. Ever since your baptism, you live and you will die in the name of Jesus. The way that St. Paul writes about it in the book of Romans is, he says, if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or whether we die, we belong to the Lord. The name of Jesus, it's powerful. And it impacts our lives in so many ways different ways. Let me show you one more. 
An interesting thing happens in the benediction that we hear in worship each week. Here's the benediction again. It's from the book of Numbers in the Old Testament. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. The very next verse says this. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. God has put his name on you. You belong to him. He promises to bless you. Your reputation is that of being a Christian. You are associated with Jesus. You belong to him. God has put his name on you. The first time that happened was in holy baptism. You were baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then in the benediction, every time we worship, God reinforces that for us, assures us and comforts us that we belong to him in that benediction. He is writing his name on us once again. You belong to the Lord. And in the name of Jesus, you then go out as a changed and transformed person. You go out and live a Christ-like life. You live like Jesus lives. You've learned from him how to love God and how to serve your neighbor. And so you busy yourself doing those things, loving God, serving your neighbor, you no longer live in the darkness of sin. You don't have to fear death and dying. There's, hell is not looming over you. You've been set free. You have a home in heaven. You belong to the Lord. Live your life loving your neighbor, serving the Lord. You've been set free by the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything about you is different. Everything about you shines that light of Christ. Everything about you proclaims Jesus, the Savior of the world. Jesus, Christ, Lord. That's who you belong to. God has put his name on you. By the grace of God, now, now, during our lifetime, we have the joy of knowing, believing, and confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pray. God the Father, we thank you for sending us the Holy Spirit so that we know, believe, and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and he is the Savior of all. Help us to live faithful lives in his name by the power of the Holy Spirit in order to glorify you in all things. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And with these words, 
God puts his name on you and he will bless you. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next week in worship. Stay in strife There